Go ahead. This is me on my sixth birthday, about to open a present that I will enjoy for the rest of my life. Grandpa went shopping all by himself. It is a video game. It is? Side free! No way! What? <gasps> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> And here it is, the same copy that I opened nearly 22 years ago. It's seen a little wear over the years, but it's still going strong. I remember this moment as a huge event in my life. My mom tells me that prior to owning this game, we used to rent Sonic 3 all the time, and that I just couldn't wait until I had a copy of my very own. But I mean, what was the big deal about this moment? It's just a game after all. I had probably a dozen games for my Genesis by this point in my life, so what was one more? Yeah, but this is a Sonic game. Words cannot properly sum up how enamored I was with Sonic the Hedgehog when I was a kid. I loved the games, I loved the shows, I had Sonic toys, I'm sure I annoyed my parents on more than one occasion by talking about Sonic and his buddy Tails incessantly, and when I started school it was all I talked about with schoolmates and friends. I'd make up games and pretend I was Sonic or Tails and climb playground equipment imagining the slides and monkey bars as part of a level in one of the games. I'd draw Sonic characters or design my own levels on notebook paper, and when I wasn't playing the games, I was reading the instruction manual. Manuals. And at one point, my sister and I even had a couple of pet lizards named Knuckles and Sally. I was hooked. So imagine my excitement when I unwrapped a gift from my grandpa Bradley, only to find out it's the best game ever made, or what my six-year-old self considered to be the best game ever made. I was so excited that I lost all interest in my other birthday presents, opening them up as quickly as I could so that I could get back to admiring Sonic 3. So needless to say, Sonic 3 was a huge deal to me back then, but it's been 22 years since that faithful day, and I've changed a lot in that amount of time. I've also changed my opinion of what makes a game good dozens of times over the past two decades, so the question I should be asking is, does Sonic 3 still hold up after all these years? Well, unfortunately, I've also gotten a lot better at criticizing games over the years, especially in the last six years since I started doing it semi-professionally, and I have to admit, honestly, Sonic 3 is still fucking amazing, are you kidding me? While I don't necessarily think it's the best game ever made anymore, it's still in my top five personal favorites, and is unquestionably the best game in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, a title that will never be revoked. To begin with, everything about this game is just so much bigger and better than the previous two installments. Sonic 1 focused mostly on tight platforming and stage hazards, and Sonic 2 on speed and flow. Both are revolutionary in their own rights, but Sonic 3 managed to find the perfect balance of the two, making this installment the bar by which all other Sega Genesis titles would be measured. The game starts out right where Sonic 2 left off, with Sonic and Tails having just defeated Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman, whatever you want to call him, and landing on a nearby island where the scientist's death egg machine has crash landed. Sonic rushes in with all the Chaos Emeralds as Super Sonic and comes face to face with a new adversary, Knuckles the Echidna, who promptly steals all the emeralds and laps in your face. Jerk. After that brief introduction, we are left to explore the island, and instantly you can just feel the huge leap in quality from Sonic 2. This game pushes the Sega Genesis hardcore. The levels are massive, and the effects are spectacular. Every color in the Genesis' limited color palette is seemingly present, and the game just runs so smoothly to the point that- Wait, what, what the hell is that? Where- Oh my god, graphics! Holy fucking shit nuts, Batman, did these emerald levels blow my goddamn mind. This was 1994. I was five years old the first time I played this game, and the only game system I had played by this point was a Sega Genesis. Hell, I'm not even sure if I knew Nintendo was a thing yet, and my young mind couldn't even conceive of three dimensions yet, but then I see... This. This was a sublime experience for me, and yeah, I know the levels aren't technically 3D, but are just two-dimensional sprites moving in such a way that they give the illusion of three dimensions, but for me, that was enough. To this day, I'm not sure why the Emerald levels of Sonic 2 didn't have the same effect on me, because looking back, those are some pretty impressive fake 3D levels in their own right. So now I'm running through Angel Island as Sonic with tails tagging along behind me when I run up this huge structure and- wait a minute, I'm at the boss already? I've been running around for like a minute and holy shit, everything's on fire! Okay, so it turns out this isn't the boss, just a cutscene of sorts, but now the entire look and feel of the game has changed from a whimsical jungle to a tense forest fire. Technically, the graphics are the same, only palette swapped, but still, someone had to take the time to recolor these art assets in order to accommodate the sudden change in tone, and it's here that we start to see what sets this game apart from both its predecessors and its successors. So up until this point, each level in Sonic had multiple acts to them. The first act, as well as the second in the original game, ended with Sonic running past a signpost and spinning it from a picture of Robotnik to one of himself, and the final act ended with him busting open a capsule full of kidnapped forest creatures. You also had this fade to black transition that transported you from one act to another as a new level 
level layout and enemies were loaded, and this worked just fine, but it kind of killed the pacing of the game for a few seconds. But man oh man did Sonic 3 improve on this aspect. Now the first act of a level ends with a mini boss that, once defeated, causes the familiar signpost to float down from the sky, ending the act as soon as it hits the ground. But then after your score is tallied up, you just start the second act right there, making the two acts feel like one interconnected level rather than the two separate stages with the same art assets. And even better, most of the transitions from one act to another loads in completely new but visually similar art assets, background images, and music, which makes you feel as though you're progressing through an actual world rather than just the levels of a video game. This is impressive not only from a gameplay perspective, but from a technical one as well. By the time Sonic 3 came out, the Genesis was already five years old, and the Sega Saturn would be released just a year later, yet Sonic Team managed to squeeze every bit of processing power out of its aging system to deliver one of the greatest games ever made. The Genesis could also only produce 512 unique colors, with only 61 of those colors allowed to be present on the screen at once. Compare that to the Super Nintendo's color palette of 32,768 and the ability to render 256 colors simultaneously, and you can easily see that the Genesis was at a huge disadvantage. However, Sonic 3 manages to work within the constraints of this limitation, and as a result is one of the most visually striking games of the 16-bit era. And side by side, we can see that Sonic 3 looks fucking amazing, while Super Mario World looks like a bunch of poopy farts. Yeah, I said it, bring it on, bring it on. Anyway, each level ends with a battle with Robotnik and a reprise of the animal capsule thing, and then you're treated to a transition from one level to the next, showing how you got from point A to point B, and more importantly, keeping the pacing up. This isn't anything groundbreaking by today's standards, but in 1994, a platformer with this much thought put into seamlessly transitioning the player from one area to the next was unheard of, and I can't think of another game from this era that did it so well. So you keep transitioning through stage after stage, enjoying some of the best level design and music in video game history, and every now and then you come across another one of those giant rings that transports you to the the emerald stages. In each of these stages, your objective is to touch all the blue balls and collect rings. Yeah, kind of an odd concept, but I'll be damned if it doesn't make for some engaging gameplay. Your character moves forward automatically, and you rotate along a grid using left and right on the D-pad, and jumping occasionally to avoid the red balls that will end the stage. Get all the blue spheres in a level, and you're rewarded with one of the seven Chaos Emeralds. So, you may have noticed how when I talked about Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, I didn't mention their emerald stages, and there's a good reason for that. I don't like them. Sonic 1 had this weird rotating pinball maze thing that you access by beating the first or second act of a level with 50 rings or more. These were really pretty to look at, but ultimately ended up being way too frustrating and easy to screw up, so I usually ignore them when I play through the first game. In Sonic 2, you access the levels by passing a checkpoint with 50 or more rings and then jump into the sparkly bits that appear above it. And as previously stated, these levels are quite the technical feat in and of themselves and can be a lot of fun, but due to the limited draw distance and the choppy rendering of going around corners, these also become a frustrating endeavor, unless you have the ring locations and stage hazards memorized in each one. And good luck collecting rings with Tails' dumbass tagging along. Like, really? But Sonic 3's Emerald Sages, these are fucking awesome. So awesome, in fact, that there's an entire hidden game called Blue Sphere that has... <clears throat> 134,217,728 randomly generated levels. Holy shit! Anyway, so you've made it through Hydro City Zone, Hydrocity Zone, I don't know, blown past Marble Garden and Carnival Night, snowboarded your way through Ice Cap and Super Sonic the crap out of Launch Base Zone, and now you find yourself on a platform at the bottom of the newly repaired Death Egg as it launches into the air when suddenly the sky darkens and you hear this. Like a lot of gamers, I remember my first encounter with the final boss of Sonic 3 as a terrifying moment. The first time I made it this far, I was so nervous that my hands shook, my heart pounded, and I promptly ran out of lives and continues, getting that oh-so-disappointing game over screen and accompanying music. Thankfully, I only had to go back as far as the beginning of Launch Base Zone, thanks to the handy save function introduced in this game. So I'd give it another go and fail. I remember this going on for days, bashing my head against the wall over and over until finally... This was the first time I had ever beaten a video game, and I remember it so vividly, sitting cross-legged on the floor in front of an old wooden TV console that was 20 years outdated before I was even born, controller dropping to the floor as tears of joy streamed down my face, and listening to some of the best music the Sega Genesis had to offer. It was a fantastic moment that I won't ever forget. But wait, what's that? There, on the horizon! Can it be? A mythical device from the future that's actually half the game I just got done talking about? It is! It's the Sonic & Knuckles lock-on cartridge! <laughs> Oh, 
Holy shit! This, this is how you make a great game even better. By now it's common knowledge that Sonic and Knuckles is the other half of what was originally meant to be Sonic 3, but due to time constraints, Sonic Team were forced to split the game in half. So their solution to releasing the game as originally intended, make a funky lock on cartridge and clumsily add the words and Knuckles to everything, and thus Sonic 3 and Knuckles was born. This of course has spawned several memes with people adding and Knuckles to the end of random things or locking out a bunch of Sega add-ons to the cartridge to see how high you can go. It's ridiculous, but I always get a laugh out of it. However, this cartridge does more than just add new levels of the game, it also completes the story. Now you can play through the game not only as Sonic or Tails, but as Knuckles as well, and well, let's just talk about that for a second. So by now you already know how massive each level of Sonic 3 is, but believe it or not, it gets even better. Firstly, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails all have a different move set. Sonic has this split second shield that you can activate by tapping the jump button in midair, and he can use the special abilities of the elemental shields. Tails can fly and swim for a short period of time, and Knuckles can climb walls, break things with his fists, and glide through the air. These abilities essentially act as the game's difficulty setting. Since Tails can fly over most obstacles, playing as him is like playing on easy mode. Sonic is normal mode because of his myriad of abilities, and Knuckles is hard mode because he can't jump as high, and most of the levels have a unique path that only Knuckles can access, which features more difficult stage hazards and level design. Like, just look at this! Do you think that's enough spikes? God! But it isn't just the number of levels that is doubled, but the number of emeralds as well. That's right, there's now 14 emeralds in total! 7 Chaos Emeralds and 7 Super Emeralds. Get the first 7 and you can turn into Super Sonic, Knuckles, or Tails, which makes you invincible and speedier, but get all the Chaos emeralds and all the super emeralds and you can turn into the hyper version of each character. Uh, except for Tails who only has a super form for some reason. You have all the same abilities as the super forms, but each character also has a unique hyper attack. Hypersonic can do this flash attack that kills all enemies on screen, Hyper Knuckles can glide into a wall and shake the world, killing all enemies on screen, and Super Tails summons Flickies to surround him, which hunt down enemies and kill everything on screen. Damn, talk about OP. Each character also has their own unique endings to the game that creates even more incentive to replay. Knuckles' final boss is against Metal Sonic, who uses the power of the Master Emerald to become super himself, and Tails beats up a giant robot in space at the end of Death Egg Zone. Sonic has the same ending as Tails, unless you manage to get all seven Chaos Emeralds, and if you did, you get to play a hidden final level called Doomsday Zone, in which Super Sonic or Hyper Sonic must fly through space to stop a rebuilt version of the final boss from Sonic 2 from making off with the Master Emerald, and let me tell you, this is beyond epic. Dodging missiles and meteors while trying to maintain an ever-depleting supply of rings is as nerve-wracking as it is satisfying. When I was a kid, I could never beat this level. I could always beat the first part with the missiles, but I never seemed to be able to beat the final boss, which was always just out of my reach. So I'd give up, start a new save file, and play until I got to this point, and then bang my head against the boss some more until I got sick of it. I was so frustrated by this boss when I was a kid that I would ask my Uncle Jake to beat it for me each time I made it this far. At one point, I had three separate files that needed to be beaten, and I asked my uncle if he'd beat all three for me. He said he'd do two, and I'd have to beat the third. And after watching him beat the first two files, I settled in for one hell of a battle, and after losing a few lives, I finally conquered my adversary. This was the second time I had beaten a video game, and it was technically the same game. Awesome. Man, what a fantastic game this is. It isn't just one of my favorite games of all time, but the single most important game in my life. I've stated in the past how I consider Sonic 3 and Knuckles to be on the level of a childhood friend for me. It's certainly the game that I spent the most time with as a kid, and it's easily the game I've played through more than any other. I've lost track of how many times I've played this game from start to finish, but I know it's well over 100. Hell, one time I played through the game as Sonic, Knuckles, and then Tails all in the same day, and due to the sheer size of this game, even completing it quickly averages around two and a half hours, so yeah, that was a long day. And I'd argue that Sonic 3's gotten even better over the years as new information about its development has come to light, such as how Michael Jackson originally composed music for the game but was left uncredited because he was unhappy with the quality of the Genesis' sound chip, later using samples from these tracks in future songs of his. And speaking of music, my god is it good! Again, this is a huge technical achievement because the Genesis really did have a poor sound chip compared to the Super Nintendo, but because of these limitations, the developers and composers had to get creative with the music, which is why we got this. As opposed to this. But here's a question for you, can Sonic 3 get even better? 
Well, yeah, actually. Introducing Sonic 3 Complete, a fan-produced work that aims to stitch the two halves of the game together in the way that the original design documents had in mind. Really, the biggest change is that Flying Battery Zone is moved so that it's between Carnival Night Zone and Ice Cap Zone as was originally intended by the developers. The sky has also been darkened to make it feel as though the sun is just starting to come up, and now when you beat the level with Sonic, the door that pops off the side of the airship now becomes his snowboard and ice cap zone rather than Sonic just landing on some random board like in the original release. And now you have the ability to toggle the super and hyper forms of Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails on and off rather than them just being on until you run out of rings, which is something that I've been wanting in this game since I was a kid. Right now the game's still in development and can only be played in emulation, though there are a few custom Genesis carts floating about on the internet, and if you're interested in checking this project out for yourself, you can do so by following the link in the description box below. And that about covers the legacy that is Sonic 3 or Sonic 3 and Knuckles, whatever you want to call it. It's a game that has stood the test of time and has reached masterpiece status in the world of video games, but more importantly, it's the game that defined my childhood and has brought hundreds of hours of enjoyment into my life and will continue to do so until the day I die. It's the title that's shown me that video games could be more than just a pastime, that they could be a hobby or even a lifestyle. It's the game that set me on my path to talking about games as an art form and holding them to such high standards, and it's the game that I go back to when things get dark and I don't feel like I'm making any headway in my dream of being a video game critic. But mostly, it's the game that acted as an amazing friend to a little boy growing up in rural Wisconsin. So, is there anything you'd like to add, six-year-old me? Sonic 3 forever! Yeah, I don't have to run oh, any more tickets. <laughs> Indeed. Thanks for watching.